Um, solve for bear. These are really... <laughs> I, I couldn't guess a thing. I mean, the only one I guess is this one, but it wasn't. That was wrong guess anyway. Solve for bear. I assume it's some sort of puzzle, and maybe if you solve it, a bear pops up. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh shows up. It's like, oh, bar. Oh, actually, that doesn't work. There's already a Winnie the Pooh SCP in this in this universe anyway. So. Which is still. It's hilarious there is one like that. <laughs> but yeah, sulfur bear, okay. Oh look, man, we're getting some highly rare ones, eh? Threat level orange? The fuck? It's key though, also. But threat level orange? That's a new one. Look at that bear. Look at the big boar. <laughs> If bear dangerous, why is it perfect cuddle com companion, huh? Look, it's all fluff, you just hug it, you just... SCP-131 Oh, SCP-1313 is not currently contained as a way of limiting the impact of the anomaly. Foundation staff are to monitor all educational institutes for high rates of bear attacks and dispatch MTF Delta-10 Anziki to the sites of incidents as soon as possible. Amnestics are to be administered to any civilians with knowledge of SB-1313. While copies of SB-1313 are available from the Foundation archives, under no circumstances are any Foundation personnel to have complete knowledge of the problem. So it is a riddle. It is some sort of riddle. Any staff found solving SB-1313 are to be reprimanded, and if the situation warrants terminated, uh, terminated immediately following the bear's capture. Excess bears are to be either released in the wild or used as food tests subject to foreseeable anomalies. What the fuck? SCP-1313 is an anomalous series of logical processes capable of being defined as a mathematical equation to which the answer is a single female specimen of Ursus Arctus. The equation itself does not appear to be inherently anomalous, but rather quick of mathematics rather than producing any number in RA, the set of uh, of all real numbers are, that are not animals. SCP-1313 resolves to produce a tangible adult and frequently enraged uh, grizzly bear. The resolu resolution does not have to be physically represented and simply considered the problem long enough to arrive at a solution has resulted in the bear's manifestation in or around the subject solving it. This just makes me think of the fucking bear from uh, Spongebob that like, sh shows up out of nowhere to like attack Squidward. He just want, he's just out there camping. <laughs> just trying to camp. And next thing you know, fucking bear attack. Oh, <laughs> out of nowhere. Subject 1313-00824 shortly after manifestation. <laughs> Look at him. Or her. Wait, it's female, right? Female spirit. Look at her. He's like, <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> How did I get here? Where am I? SCP-1313 does not require any particular mathematical ability to comprehend beyond the basic understanding of elementary elementary algebra, but all steps of the sequence must be completed in order to reach the correct answer. Skipping parts of the process or attempting to stop midway through will not result in any enormous effects and will likely produce a purely mundane result. Currently, examination of partial components of SCP-1313 has revealed the following information about the anomaly. That SV1313 itself conforms to all axioms used in current number theory, although at times has proven to be remarkably stubborn. That bears cannot be returned to numerical form simply by solving the equations in inverse pending the invention of a method of applying mathematical operations to physical objects. Is this another SCP? No? The Great Hippos... Oh, yeah! It's about the... Oh my god, this was a long time ago when I read this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was the first one. So. That SB1313 can be used as an element of other equations to produce semi anomalous results. For example, root of SB1313 results to the square root of a live grizzly bear. Likewise, uh, SB1313 in power of 2 is the product of two live grizzly bears multiplied together. It is not recommended that such der derivative. 
equations be solved as the creature produces produced are usually poorly integrated into our reality and invariably extremely hostile during the, the brief periods of existence. Uh, researching the possible military application of Irrational, exponential, and imaginary grizzly bears is currently being undertaken by a joint team from the Foundation of Mathematical and Zoological Departments. That grizzly bears exist within the set of all real numbers and are not prime. The square root of a grizzly bear is prime, however, is the only prime number that A is not a cardinal number, B is, not, is neither even nor odd, and C contains an animal component. The implication that the root of a bear is an integer and therefore that bears themselves exist on an ordinary number line are currently being investigated by Professor Hutchinson. Why is this hi name highlighted? Oh, 033. That's a long, another one that's a long time ago. Let's see, 033. The missing number. Ah, yes. The mathematical formula of equating the number of the standard. Skips over the same. Yep, 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 yep. SG1313 first came to the Foundation attention in 1967 when a bear attack was reported at, at White Cross High School here. For England, 1724 separate incidents of bear attacks in educational institutes have been observed since when estimated 1,600 fatalities and 900 further non fatal injuries. Of the 1,724 bears and mathematical bear composites generated, at least 20% are still at large. Notice. If during the reading of this document you have pondered the nature of SB1313 to such a degree that you feel you have an independently formulated portion of its structure, you have advised to make your way to the, your site's nearest amnestic distribution station and then following administration to animal control. Failure to do so may result in disciplinary action and slash or bear related injury. <laughs> Literally saying like, hey man, if you're about to solve this riddle, if you're about to solve this mathematical equation, you better stop. Because <laughs> you... You go have a bad time. <laughs> you go have a bad time because either, first of all, you gonna get scolded by us. Like we gonna make sure you you learn the ways of never doing that shit ever again. And you might or might not get attacked by a bear. I'm just saying. <laughs> Live or die, Jeffrey. The choice is yours. Hmm.